諦めんなよ諦めんなお前This is the car, this is the track, and this is what it looks like when a 300ZX blows his transmission. Or, uh, I mean, basically just explodes his transmission. There's another view of it. Pretty cool. First race of the week. This is 14 laps of Zanvort, car number 11, looking to make a very optimistic move, rubbing up against the wall and putting me directly into it. So that was, that all went down about 50 meters from my starting position. Car number 16 isn't able to, I mean, he kind of gets uh, jump scared by me and then seven runs into him. A lot of shit going down and that would actually put us in the pits with uh, damage. So bam, there we go. Losing 66 I rating to start the week off. Very next race, starting in the exact same position. But it looks like we are going to make it further than we did last race, so it's good, looking good so far. Car number three looking for a double switcheroo on uh, turn one. Going to end up running into car number four there and causing just absolute mayhem. I'm trying to go around off the track. The car ahead of me gets clipped, and everybody is in trouble at this point. It is an absolute disaster. I'm trying to stop my car, but not only are my brakes not working, but neither is my steering wheel. I eventually get the car to stop right here, and uh, this guy pulls up right next to me with similar damage five cars in the pits and that is the end of race number two even worse so we lost about twice as much i rating race this is a bit further in the week we're starting in p16 with a pretty abysmal 136.7 however we do have joey starting right ahead of us so it's always nice to have a friend in the lobby with you a teammate perhaps and um, somebody getting a really rough start there. So we gain one position. I see car number 19 in my mirror and I felt like he was gonna send it. Sure enough, he is along with the guy on his left side. They both go super, uh, super deep into turn one. So I'm gonna back off and let them have that position. I am still suffering from the trauma of those first two races. Car number 12 ahead of me looking to make a very optimistic move into turn number three. Ends up clipping this guy who ends up, yeah, I mean, I couldn't really do too much there to get around him. It was a very awkward position for me, and I end up losing about five positions from that. But I do gain two from those other two guys who were just spun off uh, on the track. We now find ourselves side by side with car number 22. We have the inside for this corner, so I'm gonna try and just maintain it. And it generally will give you a pretty good chance at gaining this position. He doesn't fight it too much. He actually backs out, so I get that one for free, or I get to defend that position for free. We find ourselves now in P20 behind Igor. So after all of that uh, lap one shenanigans, we've actually moved down quite a lot. We've moved down three positions from our starting positions. However, Igor is going to gift us P19. There is somebody, two people spinning off to our left side. So that moves us all the way up into P17. And we see these two guys ahead of us. I had a feeling this guy was gonna break late and sure enough, he does. The car directly ahead of us tries to maneuver uh, to not hit him and that causes a really awkward moment as they both rejoin like kind of in front of me. I slow down and avoid contact, which is great, but heavily, heavily compromise our exit there. So we gain one position and we lose another one. We're side by side with somebody as we head into the final corner or the penultimate corner. And uh, we have the inside for this, which turns into the inside for Turner corner one. So I'm expecting that I will be able to keep this and I'm going to hug the inside. We've got him directly on our outside. That's Gareth and crossing the line in P17. It looks like the car ahead is making a move as well at the same time. This tan car appears to have missed the apex slightly and will pick up that position as well. So up into P16 now, following behind PJ and skipping forward to lap number five, still behind PJ. We're going to get um, basically the exact same thing that happened with Igor earlier in the race. He just kind of stays wide and gives us that position. So up into P15 now, and I'm going to sk uh, skip quite a few laps here up into lap 12. So we have two laps left. We're about to cross for the penultimate lap. It looks like there is some fighting going on up ahead of us. Car number 18 trying to hold the inside, but car number 20 does really well there to take a very deep line, still get a good enough exit, and he's going to get the power down in time to, to claim a uh, track position into corner three. 18 looking for quite an audacious move up the inside there, and the grip just kind of go. It's like too much camber almost down there, so he's going to end up sliding out. We pick up that position and that will move us into P14. Uh, we have 2.6 seconds to Mat Mat Matia in front of us, not gonna be able to catch him. As we cross the line for the final time, 
it looks like there is an absolute festival going on at the end of this straight and that'll be p14 for us but let's ignore that and pay attention to the skid pad as car number four is laying down some rubber joey is here doing the same thing he hits like a sick tandem like almost figure eight type situation here with thomas car number one there who i think actually won that that race we almost run into car number four and just back up and watch these guys and here are the results for that one so yeah Finish that one in P14. Not a fantastic race, but um, I mean, it was one of survival, really, lap one. We were pretty unfortunate. However, the best way to avoid that type of situation is to qualify better. So we are going to go again, and we're going to attempt to do that, starting in P6 with a 136.3. Owen ahead of us, car number 12. Shout out to Owen. He is a uh, viewer of the stream and of the YouTube channel. But I have to say that he has probably the ugliest car I've ever seen in my life. You'll see it to my left side here, that green pink and yellow car and i know he takes pride in that but owen fuck you fuck you for that man fuck you that car is disgusting and i'm gonna have to look at it for what appears to be a lot of this race it's a difficult track to overtake on and owen manages to stay ahead of us we take a very very shallow line through turn three on lap one which is gonna hurt our run down what is arguably like the straight i guess you could call it i mean apart from the starting straight this is kind of it's not a straight but it serves as a straight car number 13 behind us and he is getting put under pressure by car number 17 who actually just under brakes a little bit through goes joey car number five looking like he's going to get locked into a battle with car number 17 he has the inside which turns into the outside for this next corner and looking behind me it looks like joey is going to struggle to keep this guy behind him he is he does have track position but 17 has quite a little bit of a lunge there fair move they're going to make slight contact and he's actually going to regain that position the guy behind joey spinning out and a lot of carnage back there i'm sorry i'm not going to cover all of that right now joey putting some good pressure onto car number 17 and he finds himself now in p6 7 8 9 so joey is in p9 up into a top 10 position and um up ahead of him, just uh, three positions up ahead of him, is us in P6, following Owen still as we skip ahead to lap number three. And everybody here in this top, like six or seven, I mean, well, really all the way back to Joey, we were just driving a pretty consistent race. Nobody was really looking to make any moves. The guy ahead of Owen did go into the dirt there, but it doesn't really do all that much to you. And I mean, even if you are faster than somebody in different sectors of this track, you tend to make it up checking on the relative here we're a second away from Owen 0.8 seconds from Kevin behind us and coming through the first corner that gap is going to close down to about three to four tenths in either direction and this is um not the greatest place for me because I know that I'm just I'm not super confident in my line through turn three which is this corner right here sometimes I nail it sometimes I absolutely shaft my exit and this is one of those times I just wasn't as aggressive on the throttle as I probably could have been and the car behind me car number 13 is staying right on my tail it is possible to make a move here and I actually kind of mess up my line here having to shift down the third and back up to fourth and looking at the relative you'll see that the car behind me drops off significantly and that was partially because I fucked up that corner partially because he did as well you can see him dip a tire into the dirt which is going to really uh, cause problems for his braking so he doesn't slow down quite enough makes contact with us and in comes Joey flying up behind him Joey now looking to challenge car number 13 for P7 there's really not that many opportunities on this track to make a clean move. Typically, the it's going to end up being like a three or four turn battle, and then either car could come out on top. Your only opportunity for a clean move is basically the first the first corner. Yeah, after that uh, that starting straight. So a second away from Owen at the moment. Kevin and Joey locked in battle behind us, and I'm trying to ignore them. Owen goes a bit deep out of the little carousel right there, heading into the penultimate corner. My exit is far superior. However, that exit. Really really does not carry the weight that this one does the penultimate exit as it carries your speed all of the way onto the straight Owen getting a slightly better one than me there which is going to separate him just enough to kind of keep him safe at least into turn one at the moment so I'm not gonna put an attack here eyes way too far ahead honestly I'm watching this blue car a few cars ahead of me and he loses a position here I get caught watching and that'll put me a little bit deeper than I would like to be losing about a tenth to Owen um, I'm not too worried about that. We have plenty of room behind, so it's not like I'm falling into the arms of anybody. In fact, it's actually not a bad position to be in for me. At the end of this little group at the front is somewhere I really I love to be. And if you've seen my other videos, <laughs> I find myself here a lot, kind of at the back of the group at the front. 
hoping not to stay here for too long. Owen, still ahead of us. This is lap number five. We're about to come across for lap number six. I get a decent exit out of there, but like I said on the last lap, this exit is much more important. And on this occasion, I actually get a really, really good one. So I'm able to keep the gap to Owen pretty small. We've got 0.2 tenths, growing to 0.3 tenths, but we have the slipstream and I just felt really good about that exit. I felt good about that run all of the way through there. So I'm gonna get a little cocky here, look to make a move on the inside, really just, just, just baiting it. And I don't know if that's what did it to him, but Owen ends up oversteering. Perhaps he got caught looking at his mirrors, you know, maybe trying to see if I was going to make that dive. I wasn't, uh, spoiler alert, and I didn't. I guess you can't really spoil something that's already happened. The two cars ahead of me, I'm noticing are beginning to fight. If you were paying attention to them there, the silver car behind was kind of, he kind of cut really deep and looked for a better exit, probably looking for a move on this corner and he's not able to get it done. As a matter of fact, they actually separate a little bit. So th there's a couple of things that could have happened there. Either he was pushing this guy um, or he was just backing off to let this guy know that he doesn't want to make a move because he wants to pull away from me and also catch up to the guys ahead of them. So I, after seeing that, I get a little bit worried. However, they are still slowing down. Silver looking to make a move up the inside right there, and I don't know if he really wanted that, but the blue car definitely hesitated on his line, and all of that is slowly going to bring them just slightly further back to me. They are heavily in each other's slipstream, though, so regardless, I am relying on quite a banger last from me if I want to catch these guys because if they are working together um, I mean then you know I'm at a disadvantage if they're not working together they're still really fast and they are still in each other's slipstream however I get a decent run through that final couple of corners and I mean the blue car is still just about the same distance but the silver car between us has fallen back slightly so I'm sucking up just barely a slipstream from him Owen behind us kind of in the same position as I am to the car ahead of me and then behind him we have Kevin who is still doing his thing Joey still trying to put pressure under Kevin and the group has kind of turned into a group of seven at this point behind Joey there's a pretty big drop off so he's not in trouble blue car goes very narrow into corner number three seven gets a very good exit really hunts a good exit there and he's actually going to push him so he he was indeed and is indeed pushing this guy and then he backs off a little bit as well to give that guy space and uh let him know that he's not looking for a move which was slightly disheartening to me but at the same time since he was pushing somebody who had so much less speed than him it does affect both of them um i mean it helps blue absolutely but it doesn't uh it's not super advantageous for car number seven so he is still backing up to us and i'm hoping that i can get this move done at some point currently sitting in p5 skipping ahead to lap number nine and the situation really has not changed at all p2 has begun to pull away from p3 p4 ahead of me is blinking in and out of existence I still have the exact same gap to Owen behind me that I did about four laps ago so I mean we're basically all just vibing at this point however that is about to change for Joey who cuts just slightly too shallow on corner number three with too much throttle input and that will spin him here comes Dean Winters smacking him and um, lucky for that black and white car who gets through there unscathed Joey is just about fine he has some damage but Dean is really going to find himself being today's biggest loser. His rear right tire is no longer functioning. However, he's pushing through it. And got to give this man props. It's not safe, but it's something. I don't know how he managed to mentally do this. <laughs> I'm going to speed it up a little bit here. He's going all the way around the track. And then a fatal moment as he spins going about a tenth of the race pace and this is lap 10 for me as i'm coming around this corner i notice him and i'm just kind of confused <laughs> a little bit at what's going on there still uh with the dysfunctional rear right tire he is redlining sixth gear basically just spinning his left tire this guy almost runs into him um this guy going through there as well and he's just he keeps going <laughs> Oh, he's almost made it a full lap at this point, and then his engine blows up. <laughs> but he's still going! He's doing what he can! Oh my god. He's not moving, but something happened to him. I don't know. He just disappears. I think that's the last I see of him. This is lap number 11 for me. I'm still in P5, following behind the silver car, who is still putting pressure onto the blue car. I mean, he's three tenths, four tenths uh, away from him, and... That'll put pressure on you when over the course of, you know, 12, 13 laps, 
Um, you definitely start to feel that, and Blue gets a really poor exit out of the carousel. That's going to put Silver directly on his tail. Now, they are one-tenth away from each other. Blue trying to hold the inside line. Silver looking for that better exit, and like we've talked about, you really want that better exit. On top of that, Blue goes into the dirt. That narrow line gives him a really wide exit, and he runs off the track. Silver gets it done very cleanly there, and um, Matt now directly ahead of us in P4. He's moved down two positions at this point. I'm hoping that possibly we can tag along with this silver car and the guy earlier and uh, kind of join in on the feast that is getting around Matt at the moment because uh, that's kind of how it tends to happen. You lose one position, you know, you probably are going to end up losing another and if there's somebody right there to pick it up, you know, that it's very likely that you lose another. You become the prey and everybody else gets this predator mentality. I'm trying to keep that present in my mind. This is coming across to start the final lap and he is four tenths ahead of us the car ahead of him has absolutely dusted him i'm gonna look to make something similar happen here to what happened to um owen earlier really just end up sending myself deep there he definitely adjusted his line slightly to try and defend that but i wasn't really able to take advantage of it as i really was very aggressive with that kind of like sneaky um, bait of a dive. He's still taking a very narrow line through here though, but he does get the car turned around at just about the perfect time to allow him to get power down fast enough that he will maintain a really good exit, honestly. And that corner, I I mean, I had struggled on that corner all week. It, it wasn't very often that I found myself with a better run than anybody through there. However, I felt pretty confident in the end of this track, and I was really hoping I could take advantage of it. Coming through this, like a big double apex, and he slides a little bit on entry. I know that that weight transfer is still going really heavy for him, so I'm hoping that I can get a good exit here, but my wheel just stops shifting. It, it disconnects for just a split second there, and um, then when I do shift, I shift too much. It was a whole thing. It was a technical uh, technical malfunction. However, the gap behind me was big enough so that Owen is not able to take advantage of that, and I feel like that's just something that happens in racing. You know, even in sim racing, you have, like, gear failure, and that is going to disallow us from uh, looking for any type of move right here as we cross the line for the final time. We are going to stay in P5. And honestly, I was I was happy that I at least had enough of a gap between myself and Owen that I was able to keep that position. We do a little bit of swerving here with him as he was currently on stream with us um, as we did this race. There he goes, wiggling down the track. This guy, this I, I'm not going to pause this or highlight any of this, but there was this crazy argument going on, like this really long argument going on, and I had to see what exactly that was. So we are going to hop on board with car number 23. This is the beginning of that same race I just showed you guys. He started, I don't know, somewhere way in the back. Car ahead gets a little bit of oversteer. He ends up punting him into that guy who dies. This guy is off the track on the side, and I'm going to... I'm going to kind of try and go through the accidents here and see what happened to everybody. Car number 15, Dean Winters, ends up, like, not by... I mean, it wasn't his fault. Car number 22 kind of forced Dean to pit maneuver him there, so he's off the track. This guy's off the track right ahead of car number 23 here. There's also people sideways over there, so we're going to back it up once again and see what happened here. Car number 20, he just doesn't really break or uh, and understeers off the track. While that is happening, happening simultaneously, car number nine is going to pit maneuver this guy into the wall who spams chat with like a million different messages within like 10 seconds. Um, that was a bit distracting. He slides back onto the track, collects this guy, collects Dean. This caught guy, car number 18, is the only one. He breaks the generational trauma by getting on the brakes. 23 actually managed to get all of the way through that without touching anybody, so props to him. That was uh, some good navigation. He now finds himself leading this group of like all of the unfortunate souls that kind of got caught up in all that tandem drift going on ahead of car number 23. So he picks up both of those positions. This guy is rejoining the track and 23 tries to avoid it, ends up running into that guy and then powering back onto the track as quickly as he can, <laughs> moves over to the racing line, um, gets a hit off the track. 24 gets collected in that, hits this guy. They all manage to uh, get out of there just fine. As 23 tries to rejoin once again, spinning his tires, car number 18 is going to send him sliding across the track and then 23 will back up for him here's an outside view of that and i mean everything is going wrong for this guy he's just lost about eight positions i think in around 18 seconds 
back onto the track. He is now, I, I think he may be the last person on the grid until he catches up to this guy who is recovering from a spin. He's going to look for an audacious move up the inside, breaking super late, sending car number 22 into the wall. He hits an ejecto front bumper, and then um, I think he gets, dis or maybe with damage, he goes back to the pit lane. And 23 is just having, I mean, his race has gone to shambles at this point. And this is the guy who, <laughs> this is the guy who started that argument. He claimed that um, this guy, like, rejoined the track in front of him. It, it was a lot, but I, when your driving is of this quality, I don't know. I mean, he may not always be this type of driver. He's literally just powering into the wall at this point. But if I ever had a race like this, I don't think that I would be typing. I, I would probably be having a long, hard look at myself in the mirror and uh, trying to decide what I could change in my lifestyle. This guy's going to keep on pushing, though. So he's uh, going to end up sliding out into this corner once again. He's definitely struggling to keep the car on track at this point. I mean, his tires are, they, they must be absolutely demolished. He does still have his downforce from his wing, and he's going to end up passing Dean. I'm sure he has no idea about the crazy struggle Dean is going through right now. Car number 19, final lap, first corner slides out and uh yeah this is i mean this is what the other guy was mad about and i get it this is a it's an interesting um <laughs> he's like he's trying to determine i think he was too much looking into his relative he didn't know where to go ends up kind of yeah hitting car number 23 there and 23 then parks it and allows him to go ahead of him he doesn't have damage i'm not quite sure why he stopped his car but he's actually he, he actually got upset that the guy in front of him didn't give that position back so, I mean, I kind of feel like 23 gave him that position. He like kind of parked after they made contact. I don't know. Either way, it doesn't really matter. What a race. We finished in P5, gaining both safety rating and I rating. Um, 44 I rating. We're almost back into 4K, still recovering from the Norge life. What a week that was. The uh, guy, car number 23 down here, only losing 13 I rating for that. He did lose a lot of I uh, or safety rating, but he had 21 incidents. So, I mean, it, it, that's, that's fitting. If you guys enjoyed this, please check out some of my other videos or my channel. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff there that you guys will find enjoyable as well.